Castle in the Czech Republic. Up on top of the hill overlooking Prague is Hrachany Castle, the world's largest castle that is still used by the Czech president today. The Prague Castle is still guarded by the Royal Guards, and every hour on the hour there is a changing of the guards. You can see most of the castle grounds for free, but if you want to go inside certain portions of the cathedral or some of the other sites, you need to buy a ticket. The tickets come in short form or long form versions. Uh, with the short form version, you get to see four sites. They give you a little map on the back, and the first one starts inside St. Vinus's Cathedral. Be aware that some of the sites have odd closing times. The cathedral, for example, closes at 4.40 p.m. Not 5 o'clock, but 4.40. Spend some time on the outside of the cathedral admiring the doors. These are some of the most elaborately carved doors I've ever seen in three dimensions. St. Vitus' Cathedral was built in 1344 in the Gothic style. It is the largest and most important church in the Czech Republic. But the reason that most tourists come to visit is because of the beautiful stained glass windows. And the most famous of the stained glass windows is the third on the left-hand side, designed by the artist Mucha and funded by Banka Slavia. You can see the advertisement on the bottom of the window. The next site is the old royal palace, where in the uh, windows there on the second floor, uh, some politicians in 1618 were literally thrown out of the windows to be thrown out of office in an act called defenestration, which is actually law uh, in the Czech Republic. So that's a pretty fitting way, I think, to remove some royal governors from the office, toss them out the window, and what did they land in? A pile of manure. Very fitting. The third stop on the short tour is the Basilica of St. George. This is the oldest surviving church in Prague Castle, built in the year 920. One of my favorite attractions in the castle is this one right here, the fourth and final stop on the short tour. And this is the Golden Lane. It's a narrow lane that has these houses built from a long time ago that have these really short doors. Take a look at how short this door is. You have to be shorter than my shoulder to come in. Just the perfect size for Topher, though. Some of the houses have been converted into gift shops, others restaurants, and others are displays of how life used to be in the castle. The Golden Lane was originally built by some of the people who worked in the castle as cheap places to live. It was originally on both sides of the lane, and at some point the lane was only one meter across. So there's this line that comes down in the middle of the lane. So you can imagine this back in the you know, 1800s as having uh, buildings all the way to here, and the lane being this far across. Not really the richest place to live. I'd wonder what these people would think that built these houses, and now their houses are the biggest tourist attraction in Prague. The only real problem with the Golden Lane is it can get extremely busy with tour groups. The best time to visit is a weekday afternoon. On the second floor of the Golden Lane is the defense walkway. Uh, this is where the guards would come up and shoot arrows out the window. Uh, today, there's also an exhibition of suits of armor. For one of the coolest Starbucks locations, check out the Praski Hrad Starbucks location, which is right next to Prague Castle with beautiful views of the Prague skyline. You might be interested in some of my other videos from Prague in the Czech Republic. In the upper left is my Prague travel guide. In the upper right is my guide on eating good Czech food in Prague. And in the lower left, for some of the best views of Prague, visit Petrine Tower. Or click in the lower right to subscribe. Thanks for watching.